<laughs> um, I love that we like started off by talking about reality TV because that's something when we were kind of chatting about you and what we love about you is like you're so just like, you know, when people think of a CEO, it's like, you know, oh, like stuffy. They don't have time for anything. They're just like work, work, work. But you seem like you know how to have fun yes. and like prioritize <laughs> life. Like we yes. saw you were just at Coachella. Mm, yeah. How was that? <laughs> I think I'm still recovering from it no i just think like i mean i think it's one thing to go for work and one thing to go for are we on yeah, yeah. oh shit oh yeah yeah sorry we just uh, we just go for it and then yeah, we'll, we just kind of start talking and then like uh, we like pick we'll out pick, parts yeah okay, we'll pick cool. up the I'm interview like, from wherever it feels like an interview <laughs> i'm just like I'm <laughs> that's great be natural we like sorry, that guys <laughs> don't know how interesting that by the pop bit was um, it's great we love talking about tv um what was the question coachella yes I mean, I think the novelty has worn off a bit now that they've been three years. Like, sorry to be a buzzkill. And then we go for work. So we have to be like, oh, and we can't go to the parties because we need to. I mean, honestly, like there's the, there's what it looks like on social media. Yeah. yeah. And then what it looks like in real life. Well, and I mean, what it actually is like. Yeah. And like you're not being a buzzkill at all because this is actually like a really hot topic yeah. for us at the moment is like talking about like we used to have these Instagram lives and everyone was like, oh, my God, I want your life. And now we're just all about being like so real so i kind of love that you said that because i actually said to jess on the way here i was like even though i don't i'm not jealous of people on social media and i don't want an instagrammable life when i look at your feed i'm kind of like oh i want that life like you look like you have so much fun so it's kind of like awesome that you were just like nah, yeah. go so the thing is yeah so the first year when i went um we were, like three years ago we were having all the fun and we were looking at a lot of other like um influencers who were just like stressed because they had to like get the perfect shot and they weren't really in the moment and i think maybe that's because we were going for our first year and we were like we were vlogging we were getting content but we were like so excited but i think when you go for like the second like and then last year i think you know it was beyonce it was M- eminem it's pretty cool <laughs> but then this year we're like okay you know like you can't yeah. Have, yeah 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 and so what does work at coachella look like for you um well, get up early and make breakfast for the models. Well, not me. Sorry, I shouldn't take credit. <laughs> Someone does. But I feel like I sh- I'm there to. You're um, Instagramming So it. did you have like a Shopo house where you had people yeah. staying with you? We have a really cool house. Like um, we always get the nearest place. So while everyone else is, whilst everyone else is like waiting for an Uber or waiting for a bus, we're like almost home. So like, yeah, that's amazing. Because I've been to Coachella and it's like, what, 40 so minutes far. or something to Palm Springs. Yeah. yeah. So we're not in Palm Springs, but that means we don't go to the parties. But when we try to go to the parties and Coachella, it's just impossible. Yeah. Totally. It's so far. Well, isn't that funny that like everyone thinks you're there partying, having the time of your life, but you obviously are working yeah. hard and like your main reason for being there is for work. For work, yeah. But then um, day three, day three after the sun goes down is awesome. Because that's when like, it's too dark for content. Yeah, okay. So like, you can just let loose. Yeah, and then it's all over because there's like so much planning that goes into it. It's all over. You can just be like, you know, really actually enjoy the show. So like you you said models are in the Shopo house. So like what happens there? Like I'm dying to know in my head. That's just like a reality TV show waiting to happen. Like is, is it like fun? Is it like what people would expect? Or is it just like kind of everyone's there to work? Um... No, it is pretty fun because we've like known that we've had been working with our models for e- years. So they've been like really part of our lives. Like they come to our parties. They're like part of the team. So it is definitely like a lot of fun. It's not like this. I don't know what people think. There's no pillow fights. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Pajama party yeah. vibes. But um, no, it's good. It's just like, I mean, day one, everyone's pre-drinking, like playing drinking games. Day two, it's like pretty hard to mobilize anyone yeah <laughs> everyone's just like we you know day one we're like yes let's get content let's go let's like let's drink day two is like <sighs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> everyone's hung over <laughs> yeah totally but i mean so your team must have a lot of fun like did you take some team members from here over there with you yeah um we took our general like we took um kelly who's the head of she's our senior social media manager and laura who's our new social media no what did I just say? Kelly's our senior content manager and then Laura's our social media manager. So, and you know, they all, it's what's great is like, they all get it. We're like, get the content, then we can drink. Get, like, it's like everyone is on the same wavelength, which is good. Like they know what to expect. So it yeah, sounds okay. like you have like a really good idea of like life work balance. So, you yeah. know, everyone you're building in this team around you as well knows that like, let's work really hard and get it done and then we can go and have fun. Yeah. Like everyone that's hustle. So our, um, 
three valleys at work are think big, get shit done and have fun. And so like everyone we hire, like we want them to embody that. Like even in the interviews, we say that's our values and like, you know, there's, you know, these behavioral questions. Tell me about the time where you displayed blah, blah, blah. But at least it's really like ingrained in everyone from like the very start. Totally. So what kind of questions do you ask people in an interview? Um, oh, a good one that I like to ask is if we were to, um, when we reference call your past manager, your last manager, what would they tell you to work on? And like, that's the thing when you ask people like, what's your strength and weakness? And everyone's like, oh, like my attention to detail. Oh, I'm just, yeah, I'm, they have I'm just pre-prepared too, answers. Yeah. And they're a bit too like, oh, I'm just too focused. Oh, like too, um, you know, I can't let go, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's like that uh, that thing that everyone tells you, like, oh, when they ask you about a weakness, just, like, turn it into a strength. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's, like, 101 interview practice. Yeah, but it's, like, what are you actually – what what do they actually want you to work on? And then surely it's not not nothing. And then we can compare it later. It's just that, like, you know, the fact that we, mu- we will actually ask – their manager so they just need to be a bit more on their toes about it yeah and then okay. also we say okay well so that's at work and then what about personally what would you and then what's been stopping you from doing that that's great it sounds like you guys have like a really nice um level of like focus on personal as well as work which i yeah. feel like is like lacking in so many jobs so like we hear about like my friends have jobs and like people are just like work 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 they don't even care about you you're just like a cog in a wheel yeah. so like it's awesome to hear that a company like yours that's so big still like cares about their... Yeah, I think it's all about just hiring the right people in the first place because honestly, what I've learned the hard way is like it takes one bad apple just to like ruin it for everyone because if there's if one person's taking the piss, then you kind of want to put up... You know, you have to start micromanaging and, you know, making up these new rules to try and like keep everything everyone in check, whereas you're punishing all the everyone else but because there's just that one bad person yeah so it's so important to get hiring right in the first place but honestly like we we've just had to you've had you have to learn it for yourself like even if someone tells you that advice it's really hard to like really take it in until you've experienced it totally yeah like you can you can hear it over and over again but there's nothing like going through like challenges and failures to really like learn those lessons and then take them on board for yourself did you kind of go through that with hiring the wrong people and and going through some kind of stuff there yeah absolutely (laughs) anything you want to share no (laughs) hr is gonna get upset at me (laughs) well what is it actually like to work here so once they like get through the door um it sounds like you're looking for someone that's like quite genuine in the interview process because like you know people can have these rehearsed answers and you don't really want that you want to like get to know somebody so once you've kind of once they're in once they're in this like showpo crew what's it actually feel like to work here um on I, so we've definitely made our mistakes here as well like we sometimes when people come in we just expect them to like just like our onboarding process previously hasn't been great we just expect throw people in the deep end and just expect them to like just take on the role and now we realize you know hiring someone doesn't mean like you don't make you don't make your life easier like there's the huge onboarding process to really like bring them into like into that role and then also like get them to feel comfortable in that workplace and get them to like be orientated with their team um and then god i think we just need to like uh, but what's really changed is like now that show has grown up like we need to we've shifted from hiring more generalists to like you know specifically specific. yeah because yeah, when you're a startup you kind of people are like what exactly am i going to be doing here you're like well you're going to be doing yeah like customer yeah. service and packing orders and you've got to do marketing and how do you go at whipping up a chocolate souffle and like you know yeah. you just kind of got to do everything and everything you know everything yeah. there is and i love that you just said now that shofo's grown up like yeah. you know like it's like it's clearly your baby and like you've seen it grow has like ha- how has your role changed in this whole thing? And like, do you find that like you, you have as much to do or now you're just kind of like sitting back and letting, I don't know, like the specialists you said that you've hired do yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, oh God, actually, to be honest, like I think for a while I probably let go, I have probably let go too much. So, you know, this whole like, oh, I'm the lazy CEO. Um, and the whole- Because that's I, your Instagram account, yeah, right? The lazy which, CEO. Honestly, I did it like as a joke because like Jane Lou was taken. 
because I signed up too late. I know it was because I typed it in and I couldn't find it. Yeah. And I was like, where is she? I <laughs> um, no, I, yeah. So like I kind of did that as a joke and then I just kind of really enjoyed. Well, that's the thing. When you start growing the team, you start carving out different functions for someone better to take over that role. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for me, the remaining ones were um, hiring someone to do accounting because like I hate it and I was still stuck well, doing Well, you're it. a former accountant. I know. I'm like the worst. <laughs> that was the first one to go. I no, that, that was the last. Oh, that was the last yes, one Yes, that's <laughs> the irony. I was like, how am I, I? The whole point of me starting a business, it sounds bad, was to stop doing accounting. I'm like, how am I still doing the accounting after all this? And then it was also like social media because, you know, as much as I love it, um, I can't be in for the day to day. And then once that all happened, um, it really was, it, you know, I kind of made myself like, you know, that like, there's this like, you know, the, the hit by the bus test, like whether if the view were hit by a bus, would the business still be running? Mm-hmm. But then oh, I haven't heard of that test. My business would not be running. No, neither. <laughs> I just, mm-hmm. yeah. My, yeah. <laughs> oh, you could probably replace me. <laughs> <laughs> but then maybe um, not the podcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, you know, spend this time, I, been spending a lot of time overseas because we're trying to grow our international markets and then that has been going really well but I think I've just like had not uh I probably have taken a bit of a backseat to the business and like I think I kind of went too extreme Mm. so now I'm like in the last like few weeks I've come really back into it and it's meant like way longer nights I you know I was I used to leave work at six and now it's back to midnight but I've just been really enjoying it, actually. So I feel like you need to change your Insta handle to like the not so lazy yeah. CEO or something. Like do the a former bit of a lazy CEO. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, like midnight, that's definitely a late night in the office. Yeah, and is it just because you love it so much? Like, is that why you feel like you're back in it, or the business really needs you to be here and you're kind of the one driving it forward? Um, I think it definitely ebbs and flows, but. There's just, I think the thing is there's always something to do and that's where you need to draw the line and have that balance. But as long as you want to do it, like there's no reason to go, like if if you're not tired and if you want to do it, like there's no reason to like, like I know where my limits are for burning out and I'm still so far from it. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, yeah, so I'm just going to keep going. Do you know your limits because you've hit them before? Like, is that how you've kind of figured that out? No, I've never hit my limit. I just can work so much harder than this. Oh my God. <laughs> we hit our limit like on the daily. Like yeah. I feel like every like probably every three months or something, like we go so hard. Like at the moment it's for this trade show, which is why we're oh, here yeah. uh, for Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week Australia. And um, usually like around the time that we have like these events or something, we're just like working all weekend, working crazy hours, like traveling so much. And then like, it's like clockwork. Like yeah, we just, just hit a wall where we're like, Oh my God, we need the weekends. I like, usually yeah. get like so sick and I'm in bed oh, yes. for like three Sam days. That's really like my sick. thing. That's how I know when I've gone too far. And I'm just like, I cannot talk about work for a full 48 hours. Nobody mentioned the word fashion to me. <laughs> oh yeah, I hate, um, I'm pretty good at like, just like switching off on the weekends and not talking about work. Like unless I'm at my desk, like, and actually doing something. Just oh, like, okay. it's really healthy to switch off, have a wine. Oh, it's so important. Yeah. But I think that what's different now is also the fact that like, because I'm not like as in working like in the business so like back lo- the last time I was actually working this hard was probably when I was like just like two three years into the business kind of doing everything so if I wasn't doing this I could be doing you know it's like social media posts I could be um replying to customer service like I could be yeah. doing so many things there's always something to do now it's like I actually don't even know how to like log into the customer service ticketing system or like I mean I know like if I was to log in, they have a system. Yeah, like I don't yeah. want to jump in someone else's ticket. Like I will create more mess than that I can handle. So yeah. I, mean, I will help. So, you know, the stuff that I do need to do, I kind of like, I, I still need to, I need to work with the team. And so that's got a sudden pace. So it's, There's more of a it's process. not so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Was that like a weird transition? Because like, I feel like sometimes like, if I don't know something that's going on in the business, I'm like, you know, it's kind of hard to like be in it, but not be so deep in it and like yeah. know things, but not know all the things. Like, has that been like a bit hard to let go of that control? Um, oh, yeah. It kind of feels weird because you don't know what the balance is. Like, am I, it's not, it's not so much control for me, but it's the fact that like, 
you know, I don't know how to use this, but should I be? Because you used to be so on top of it. Yeah. But then I think now that I've looked back, there's certain things that I don't like. Well, thank God I didn't spend time like trying trying to learn how to use that thing because I haven't needed to use it at all. Yeah. yeah. So, again, it's about finding the right people. Okay. And so something that like I we find really interesting to chat to people about is like their opinion towards like a nine to five working environment. Mm -hmm. So like with our girls that work in the office with us, we're always like, it's not nine to five, like do whatever you want. Like as long as you get your work done, like we don't care what hours you do it inside of. And then like we always find pushback from them that they're like, no, I actually like doing my work in the nine to five. So then like oh. I'll do it all then and then I can leave and like check out. Clock off because we're like, oh, well, for us is our business. So we yeah. are going to be in it like yeah. all the time. We're like, if we want to get our lashes, like if you want to get your lashes done in the middle of the day, like just go do it. Like, or like yeah. we make them every Thursday. Like we all stop and like we watch the bold type at lunchtime together. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. And like we love all I this love fun that. stuff. Oh, oh, it's so good. And that yeah, I guess of the good old days. Yeah, yeah totally. Exactly. It's stuff We're, you can do when you're a small team. Yeah. yeah. We're trying to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. Do you guys, what's your like version of that now? Like if, you know, you we can see like you have so many people that work here. You couldn't just be like, everybody stop. We're watching the bold type. Like <laughs> how do you kind of like keep that fun in it? Because like, you know, your office is so pink and beautiful and everyone, we saw this big team meeting of like 15 people when we walked in yeah. and everyone seems to be collaborating and working really well together. It's a beautiful like open plan space. Um, yeah, we do things like um, we have our 3 p.m. stretch. So um, our email marketing girl at 3 p.m. will she'll ring a bell and then everyone gets up and stretches and then she'll like read a quote and then oh my god, that's and then just like and then we all just it's we actually I think we were sarcastically at first we used to be like oh never stay and then now <laughs> we just like but because new people join it have joined that they just see us doing it so now it's just become part of the routine. Uh, oh god, I we, love that. <laughs> Was that like, did your marketing girl come up with that? Cause she was really into like. No, nah. she was just like, like, let's just stretch. Like, it's just like kind of really happened organically, which is nice. Um, at when we have our team meeting at the end of the week, everyone, um, you know, starts drinking as well. So that's you can nice. get a that's bit right. together. Yeah. So you have a bit, a team meeting with everyone in the office on Fridays. Yeah, and what, nice. how does that kind of go? Like, is that, I'm picturing like a scene out of like the intern or like you know like yeah. is it really like startup -y vibes is like one person talking or like yeah like everyone has a different section so there's a there's a section that's what the fuck's chain up to um that's then, a section <laughs> yeah it's like amazing. where's she traveling this week yeah and then so like sometimes they'll be like oh I'm, like sometimes i just put in like a funny anecdote from the week because i just want to tell like the story to the whole team or um you know you know, I'll talk about the top priorities that everyone's working on. And then we have like Michelle's Melting Moments, who's in our customer happiness team. And so she, she'll she do like a few like really great customer responses. And she started to like, just because we get so many now, she, she'll theme it. So one is like, we'll be like a bunch of girls getting um, married in, like in like bridesmaids dresses in Shopo. And then one could be like, say Mother's Day in Shopo or, um, you know, feedback about that extended sizes range. And so... And then there's, what do we have? And then there's uh, there's levers, anniversaries. Oh, the f when new people start, they're on the grill. So they get, um, especially it's really funny when it's two people because they ask each other questions mm -hmm. and they can get like real like. Oh, what? It's like an interview like on the spot right there. Yeah. Right? It's like if you had to um, fire one person, who would it be? Like a little bit. And they'll say like Jane or their direct manager. <laughs> and they'll just be like. <laughs> that's hilarious that's when amazing. we have new people start we like have this little trick that we like to do oh, i can't believe i'm saying this on i podcast. can't believe you're telling everyone this well i feel like it's so, it's cool to talk about like it it's is, like a good little just, insight if you're gonna work with us in future block your ears right now uh -huh. so um we like try to like drop or like we we tell the team like okay someone has to drop into the conversation like in the first couple of days that they're working with us like ask them what their favorite dessert in because we're super into desserts like we just love desserts and so then we'll We'll ask them and then they like won't even notice like it'll be like oh, not yeah. even a thing and, and then their birthday well not, not even. on the friday so like if oh, they start on the monday one. and then on the friday afternoon like the way we kind of like finish the week usually we like all have a meeting and we'll um we write like nice things about each other and then we read them out at the end of the week and then we have like their favorite dessert like surprise they will be like well them. done it's been a really hard week but I you've earned that. this it's really cute and it was actually we can't take credit for it we no, work we in a guy called jj who's like amazing at 
building team cultures and he gave us that little tip and oh. we do if it I every steal time. If I I will give you guys credit. Okay, okay. amazing. Um, Absolute deal. It's just like such a nice way to like make someone feel special and feel yeah. heard in their first week. And like particularly like because we are a small team, like we want to make everyone feel like super invested in us and like really excited about the vision. And that's just such a nice like way to go above and beyond for someone. Yeah, totally. I love that. Yeah. So we used to... um. We used to do it for their birthday, so they it can be a nice surprise. But now it's it has to be like because we're so big, it has to be like systemized. Otherwise, it gets forgotten. So they just like fill in what their favorite cake is. Uh, oh yeah, we, you, we've actually like, been coming up with a form at the moment because it is good yeah. to kind of be able to refer to something. And if you want to give someone something or yeah. you know, like a bonus a, or something, like a rather, present. yeah, like yeah. we've talked about like doing presents of like their favorite thing or like whatever's on their wish list right now, like rather than a salary bonus because like yeah. it makes such a difference would, to yeah. like give someone a present like that well this was something else that jj talked about was that like if you can give if you give someone money they go spend it whatever but if you give somebody a a gift then they'll always associate that you know if you gave someone like an amazing handbag that they'd always wanted then they're always going to associate that with you and think of you when they see it and that kind of creates this like nice emotional connection yeah that makes it sound so calculated i know i mean (laughs) the thing that um i feel like we've like we've given out you know you know, our staff will give like stuff over the years. Um, but like in terms of what, sorry, that didn't make any sense, but what like really reson like what everyone really loved and still talks about was when we were like, Oh, we've just had a great quarter. I'm paying, I'm buying your coffee for the rest of the year. And then ah. everyone just got, I mean, it's not, they just got like five hundred dollars in coffee or something like that. The local cafe. That's so nice. Or they all got though. like credit downstairs. That's awesome. Yeah. That's and a I really think good one. That, that way, every day they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, totally. They're thinking of you every day. No, yeah. it's it's really nice, like perk to be able to offer somebody because you know, yeah, there are so many workplaces where like people just don't feel valued at all, and like you're just kind of like going through the daily grind. So to like be an organization that can be like, hey, we really value you, and we're gonna you know do this little gesture and just make such a difference yeah. to someone and they feel important in your organization. Yeah, absolutely. And I like, I love that you guys do like this big team meeting now to like keep each other up to date. Cause for us, we're at this stage where like, you know, there are five of us in the office every day. And if something happens, if we have a win, if we have a customer service drama, it's kind of just like yelled across oh, the room. And so we all know. Yeah. 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 But did you, how did you kind of like come up with these systems? Like, was that something you had to like speak to mentors about? Or cause you were kind of going through it for the first time. Yeah. Our, um, our uh, ex head of, people and culture she implemented the team meeting and i think it's sometimes like i think it would probably how did it even come about like i think maybe we grew and then we felt that you know we like when we were smaller we had such an amazing culture and then we felt that that we started to lose that um and i think she just kind of like overhauled it and looked at some of the things that we could put through um so i mean there are things that are like just nicely organic but there are things that you just have to be like you know, we just let's have a let's totally. overhaul this process. What yeah. what was happening when you realized you lo- were losing the culture? Like, was um, it just a different vibe in the office? Yeah, I think just you could just tell. Um, I don't know, just people didn't seem as like I guess happy or part of the team as yeah. um, they used to be, and I think you know people didn't feel like they were like the, the, the communication was happening where they knew what was going on. They didn't feel like they were as part of the team and you know to be able to when you're not hearing when you're only hearing about big company changes not as it happens yeah Yeah. and Um, do you kind of like take that stuff personally like are you kind of like really like you know you want everyone there to be like loving what they're doing and yeah I mean it's hard to find a mix because you kind of like because you get some of it it's just like it's you know it's like I want an amazing workplace. So you want to take the feedback on board and it's great. But sometimes you get just people who haven't worked in work, certain work environments before. And it's like, well, you know, we are here to work. And the thing is you will get some juniors who lack that experience who might just kind of like expect they take a advantage. Bit yeah. yeah. They get confused with like the fun being like not a productive environment. Yeah. Whereas like you can have both. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we've we've talked about that actually with um a mentor of ours, Kath Wills. We sat down with her a couple of weeks ago and she said to us, like, I'm really impressed that you guys managed to bring that like um, you know, like have that fun and for your 
staff to kind of know where to draw the line and like to get work done and like Mm. so far we haven't had that issue where like you know our girls like we trust them I guess we've you know we went through the interview process and we found people who they're not here just to have fun because then you know you wouldn't have a thriving business you wouldn't yeah. be able to employ them they yeah, understand then we should all it. just like go to the beach or something yeah, yeah exactly those are called friends yeah exactly. <laughs> um yeah so i guess you do kind of need to make sure that the people you're hiring understand that and they're not gonna like just have fun all day every day especially yeah like when we say have fun it's not really just like about having fun yourself it's like making work a fun environment like a comfortable enjoyable experience for other people it's not just like come here and drink rosé yeah yeah <laughs> even totally. though we did get we off, did get off yeah, oh you yeah. did yeah. and it's like yeah. 2 30 on a monday, yeah. on a monday. <laughs> um so it sounds like you're like super passionate about that team environment and yeah. you've obviously built up like such an amazing company and now looking back on it i guess like what is it that like when you wake up in the morning like what are you super passionate about like what's driving you forward um I mean, we've got some like really interesting business challenges, which I think is really exciting. Um, sometimes it's like, like there's definitely times I'm like, well, I don't know how we're going to deal with this. <laughs> but um, I love that you say it's exciting. Yeah, I think so. Because otherwise, and the thing is like, it's exciting that I'm able to have so much, um, so much of a play in it as opposed to like if I was working corporate or if I, if I was elsewhere. And the fact that we are in such an exciting industry, like, it's constantly changing so much is fun like happening and that's that is what's what makes it hard and what makes it exciting um and yeah we're not like no day is the same you know um and yeah I mean it it definitely is it can be tough but I think you know the whole point is like you're not like I think that shapes who you are as a business and as a entrepreneur like it's not just about winning like anyone can do well when the company's when you're winning it's those obstacles that really and being having that like um, resilience and tenacity through those periods that's what really makes who you are okay so you like you really enjoy that journey it sounds like you are like such an entrepreneur like when you (laughs) speak like I can just tell how much you love it because yeah from the outside everyone's like oh like we just want to like achieve this goal achieve that goal but it's actually like the whole journey is the fun yeah, part like absolutely. to hear you say that like you miss the days when you were like a smaller business like that like you know inside I'm like hee 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 I'm just yeah. enjoying it right now yeah. and that's why you have to just enjoy every step and um I'm so glad like back then um you know we really celebrated the wins we really like made the most of it like I feel like I savored those moments really well we used to like take photos and videos and just like really like you know and really got to know our team it's not like a race you know like when and the thing is especially because we don't have investors like we don't need to like exit and like list or whatever like we we are not in a rush for anything yeah there's not an end goal per yeah se. Mm. and so that's kind of like exciting because we're just like ultimately like i think like even if everything went pear-shaped now um you know i just I still think like I've created like this, like just doing this and having done what I've done and having lived through that, like that in itself is exciting. Mm. Um, And yeah, like I think, I I mean, ultimately like, so I don't know if I'm telling the story well, like it's like Jim Carrey, I think it's Jim Carrey. His dad was an accountant, uh, which I used to be, uh, as you mentioned. Um, And then his dad was made redundant at 50 and Jim Carrey was just like, you know what, like, and I think his dad wanted to be something, maybe like a comedian. I don't know. But he was just like, you know, at least if I'm going to, I'd rather be like, I'd rather fail. Trying. Be, trying than being like mediocre as something that I don't even care about. Mm-hmm. Totally. So did he become a comedian? Not the dad. The dad is a failed accountant. Whereas, but then. Oh, oh so he put it on to Jim. Jim Carrey wanted Got to it. make okay. No, they both did, I think. Oh, and then okay. I think he probably saw, I don't know. I like, <laughs> you know, I've heard this story from someone else. I yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, but it's true. Everyone's You're like, right. no, his dad's a doctor. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, because and that's kind of what happened to you as well, right? Like we read about it before that like your parents wanted you to kind of follow this traditional path and that's yeah. why you became an accountant. But you were like, no, I'm getting out there. I'm doing this. I'm giving it a shot. Yes, exactly. So good. 
Love Your that. Life. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. So it seems like you're so good at kind of like being at the forefront, I guess, of these like ideas. Like you launched Showpo, I want to say 2010. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, then Showpony. Um, yeah. So you were like, <laughs> obviously like, you know, at the time of e-commerce and I guess like we're like always chatting about like the fashion industry and how like quickly it's changing. Um, do you like foresee any things that like, you know, do, are there any pivots on the horizon? Like, uh, do you guys um, like look at sustainability as like a factor that's coming into your business um, or like any other things like that that you've seen coming up? Yeah, absolutely. It's something that um, our, our team has been working on and it's I think it's going to really shape how the industry is moving, especially the fast fashion industry. Totally. Oh, cool. That's so cool to hear that your team's been working on it. Do you have like someone that's specifically like working on a project or anything? Yes, we, yes. Oh, cool. It's like, I think we're more of a show, not tell company. So mm -hmm. I don't like, you know, coming here to talk about like, da, 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 when we're not, it's, we're still so, we have so Yeah, you're to go. figuring it out. Totally. Yeah. And we feel the same. And I mean, like, I guess talking about like, there's no end goal. Like it is a journey. Mm -hmm. And like, we feel also like with our shoe company, like we're always on this journey and like, we're always looking at ways that we can become more sustainable, but like, are we going to be there tomorrow? Like, unfortunately not, but we are kind of like taking those steps to move towards like hopefully a more positive kind of like positively impacting the world through fashion, but also like through our production. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I want to eventually be one of the people like show to be leading the way on this, but I know we're so far from it at the moment. Cool. But that's really cool to hear that like that's something that you're thinking about. And like, obviously, you know, you're so like, yeah, as Jess said, like ahead of the trends with everything. Um, and like you've built up such like, you know, when we look at like turnover figures, I think we read that like last year, Shopo turned over like $80 million. Is that right? So we're on a run rate for that. Which yeah. means, what, oh, is, what okay. does that you're mean? Projected. Accountant? Pro yeah, <laughs> it's like our current rate. Okay. Projected for eight. Yeah, well, anyway, we going at this I mean, rate. one million oh, I would have found impressive <laughs> anyway. So just like a lot of money. But like, is that something that now you, you're you looking at like, okay, awesome. Like we've made all this money. Like how can we like, you know, use the business to do good or like, you know, give back in some way? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've um like, so for the last like four years, I think we've been working, we've been doing a charity sample sale where oh, everything yeah. goes um to the hunger project so yes we've we read been able that. to provide a thousand microfinance loans which is exciting but i mean that's just i know we can be doing a lot more and so you know we're it's all stuff that we're working on there's like a oh i think we're at the point where it's just like we have so many competing um projects with limited resources and we just need to get better at focusing um Honestly, I feel like our biggest problem right now is we've just started a lot of things. We've got, we're, we're running like a million projects at once. Yeah. We just need to finish some. Well, well and like and for, for like, you know, on track to turn over $80 million, you're a small team. You're like, such a small team. Huh? I couldn't oh, believe really? that yeah. figure compared to how, like. How wait, many people do you employ at the moment? We've got a hundred and we've got like 70 in this office and 50 in our warehouse. Yeah. yeah like that's 70 small. in your office, like feels, feels tiny. Oh, because that size company, I was like expecting like a thousand or like something like oh. crazy. <laughs> we had um, like back when we had our, when we were four girls and we used to like call out to each other like in the office. And that's why we were like, how are we having communication problems? Because back then we used to just like, you just think you say that out, out loud. Everyone knows. Yeah. And that's when we realized it wasn't happening um, like later on. Anyway, we four of us and we would have like a team of 20 in the warehouse but really the people working on growing the business was the four of us we made up we got to we got to our first million dollar month then oh my god i read that so it's million like, dollar a month so yeah. that's why i'm like oh, we want seven. what you've got yeah i know <laughs> i i first read that and i thought it said million dollar year and i was already impressed and then i was like million dollar a month what yeah <laughs> i couldn't believe it so what do you kind of because like obviously there are so many companies that like start and like have these dreams of becoming like a huge company but like what do is there like a secret sauce that you like attribute Tell us your, all your secrets to? <laughs> um oh god like is there was there a moment where you were like yeah like this is why it's working or like this is what like this is we're on to something honestly i think by the time you realize you're onto it you need you need to be thinking about the next thing yeah, yeah. By the time you, like, it's, even if you realize someone else might realize too, um, I 
think it's just I think honestly finding good people who like is is what it takes the thing is what we're doing is we're not reinventing the wheel you know we are it's an it's a fashion business so we're not doing it's not like we are necessarily innovating like yet I guess um so it's about doing something really well um and so like you know we've got our head of product who's turned this business that used to be completely just a retail business that bought um uh, from third party suppliers we now design 80 percent of our own products oh, cool. so and but and i have no fashion experience so finding her was the you know, the gateway to all of that happening yeah. so and i think it's just so it's about like just finding the talent and i think like it's so funny that you said that that like so many people we speak to the secret to success a lot of the time doesn't seem to be like totally reinventing the wheel it just is kind of like doing something and doing it really well, having great customer service, doing it in a smarter way than other people doing it. And yeah. like, that's so cool. Like, cause you know, I think so many people are out there like, oh, but I'm never going to think of like these crazy ideas. And like, <laughs> you know, you don't have to have crazy ideas. You just kind of have to like, really like work hard, have passion, have drive, find the right people and go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And like when, I guess like it can be like pretty overwhelming to like start something, particularly now when it feels like it's so saturated and it's so difficult, seemingly difficult to get cut through. When you set out to create Show Pony, were you like, did you have this vision for it? Were you like one day we're going to have 70 staff and like have like an epic office that's going to be white and pink in the middle of Sydney CBD? Um, no, I honestly had no idea what I was, what I wanted. I think at the time I just wanted to not go back to the corporate world. And I remember when, um, so basically I had another business that failed and we ran these pop-up stores, stocking emerging designers and, um, which, and I quit my corporate job to work on that. Um, and then so coincidentally at that time, my business partner went overseas for a month on holidays. So when she was on holidays, um, I spent that whole month, um, you know, because these are like, uh, we were doing pop-up stores that were just on three times a week. There was all that extra other time. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to build a website. And so I built, built the website by myself and took photos of almost 2000 products myself oh my and God. uploaded it all. And when she came back, I was like, and so I was pivoting the business without realizing, without it being so structured and planned, I was just like keep, keeping busy and saw that opportunity. When she came back, she was like, oh, you know, I don't want to do the business anymore. She was over it. She was burnt out and over it. And I was like, oh, but like, just look at the website. I think we can like, I think we can make it work. She's like, no, no one shops online. And I was like, fucking kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so she didn't want to do it anymore. And I was just devastated. I just quit my job and I had a great job and all of a sudden I had nothing. I had a failed business. I was in debt. I was unemployed in the middle of a global financial crisis. So I just like had, and I, I didn't have the confidence to continue that business by myself. So I just like had to drop it. And so I had nothing else to turn to. So I actually got a part-time job as a receptionist and then just was I'm like, I'll take whatever I can get. So I only at this point had one friend that had their, his own business. Mm -hmm. And because this is back in 2010, like it wasn't, I feel like entrepreneurship's kind of like has been trending since then. Yeah, but just like, totally. I didn't know anyone back then. And so I actually, um, I reached out to him to hope, I was hoping to get a job with him because I thought like, look, no one else is going to hire. Maybe he'll give me a job. Maybe I can work my way up there really quickly like up the ranks and I'll be able to learn from him how to start a business. And then he kept saying like, Oh no, like I, um, he kept saying like, let me introduce you to another friend who wants to start on online, uh, a fashion retail business. And I kept being like, Oh, I've done the fashion retail thing. I failed. Oh, you wanted something different. Well, I just like, I'm like, I'm not a fashion retail person. Like don't, you know, like I've just literally done that and failed. That's like the one thing I shouldn't be doing. Yeah. But in his mind, that's what I was good at because back when we did have the first business, um, we spent so much um, of our time and effort and money on PR and where, you know, we should have been spending on social media. We spent it on PR. Um, it didn't lead to sales because, you know, I think sales isn't for a small business. Mm. Um, well, there's exceptions. I think you need a really innovative product or story. But anyway, so we um, we started this um we hemorrhaged all this money on PR and then we didn't make sales from it. 
But then because I was like spamming my spamming it all across my Facebook, my friends had this impression that I was some kind of like retail expert, a retail <laughs> guru. And that's why he was like, oh, you should do this. Okay. And, um, and so she introduced me to this girl. And I'm like, oh, very reluctant, very reluctantly went because at this point that was my only option. Yeah. And then we just like instantly hit it off, got really excited, storing ideas with each other. And then one night over too many glasses of wine, we decided on the name and the concept behind Show Pony. So cool. And just went for it. And then like with Show Pony, you started a Show Pony and then you kind of became Show po over time, right? Yeah. How did that kind of happen? Um, so we started selling, um, I think we started selling more and more internationally because of you know, the powers of social media. And then we looked into it a bit further and realized there's like show ponies already in the States uh. and other countries, but particularly the States where it's our second biggest market. They're very litigious. And so we're like, okay, we can either like stay with show pony and then just keep watching over our shoulders. And one day, no, we'll probably have a legal battle. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're not good at law. We're good at marketing. So we should just and accounting. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you rebranded. Yeah. That's funny because I feel like people like really hold on to stuff like that. Like when, like we've talked about like potentially changing our name and it like, it seems like such a big change, but in reality, like show pony to show po, it's like, it's, it's not a big deal. And it's basically actually, just an abbreviation. And it means that we've got the unique handle. Yeah. yeah. And I think like, it's pretty cool. Like the legacy, like one day, like, you know, I've just, We've made up this word. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like the same for us with tubes that we like came up with this weird name for our shoe label. And like we didn't mean to come up with it. We got there in this like roundabout way. But now it's kind of like, oh, great. We have this unique name and that works. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned social media before and how like you were like spamming people on Facebook. And, um, you know, obviously like when we were doing reading about you, just, you know, you seem to be you're all over social media and people describe you as like this social media guru and you've even started this Facebook group. So actually like years ago, somebody said to us, oh my God, you have to start, you have to join this group. Uh-huh. Like-minded bitches drinking wine. It's so cool. We were like amazing. We're like, we're what is that out. name? That's the funniest name we've ever heard. Yeah, we, yeah well, like, we have to be involved with this. And then when like later we had, we read that you started it. We were like, uh-huh. oh my God, that is amazing. Like, of course, you know, like so cool that like, it's not just, good enough that you're amazing at one thing. Now you've started this whole movement as well that like yeah, is just like basically that. women supporting women is so cool. We literally started it. Me and um, Jen George and I, and she has her own business as well. Um, this girl's like sold like two businesses or something. She's pretty incredible herself. Um, but she, we just like got a group of girls, like it's like 20 of us to have dinner. So we can just like, you know, it's not like a anti-men thing we're like let's just get a group of girls because we keep going to events and they're just like all men it's all men and yeah. it's just us um yeah especially like in the startup world like it's yeah. just there's it always like 20 men to one woman exactly so we're like let's just go have dinner and just hang and we had such a great time and so we're like okay well let's just make a facebook group so then we can do this regularly and just like hit each other up and then we can make it just public so whoever wants to come can come and then no that was like three way. and a half years ago and it's just organically growing. That's, That's so, so cool. cool. And I think the best part about it is that like what um, you really realize once you're kind of like starting on this business train is like men just do business and approach business in a really different way to women. And like when we speak to other men who have like started companies, I'm like, oh, I can't really relate to what you're <laughs> saying, you know, because like so damn confident, like they're well, so confident in themselves yeah. for no reason. Like, yes. And also like it's just kind of like, oh, OK, like monkey see monkey do like, you know, there's just there's no like I don't know, in my experience, like I'm like overanalyzing things and I'm like, I want to speak to other people that like have emotion when their first person quits and like, you know, all these other things that I can relate to that I feel like is why like-minded bitches drinking wine is so cool because it's like a group of people that exist just for that purpose. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys like run events as well, right? Yeah, we have. We had the the last one at Shopo and it was so cute because it was our, um, we had a few speakers um, and we had a bunch of girls from like minded bitches um, donate things. So we had like oh, a amazing. donut wall, we had goodie bags, we had a platter and you know, we like gave shout outs to everyone, but the whole, but then we sold tickets that all went to the hunger project, oh, which cool. is the cha- our um, charity support. And so it's like everyone pulled in for a good cause and it's like, yeah. That's it so really good. Nice. It was networking, like something you were doing a lot of in the early days to like 
build up your business? I think networking is so important. I cannot um, be like be an advocate for it enough, but I think you can't go in with the mentality of like wanting to network. Like, and I think, but I guess it's hard. It's different because I'm like a, I am an extrovert and I get, like I feed off other people, but yeah. you know, there's introverts who like just, it's not find it quite difficult yeah so i think then maybe you just gotta go and set yourself a goal of like i'll just talk to x y the people that's, but that's yeah. what we do that's yeah what we do. we're but not we i mean we're extroverted and we can chat to people but we also just like really enjoy our own company and like watching found upon brawl so oh, like man. extroverted introverts yeah so or like introverted extroverts so i don't know <laughs> we've often like set a goal if we go somewhere we're like right we need to make one awesome connection then we can go home yeah, and watch yeah, tv yeah. you know like oh my god i know i'm yeah i'm kind of the same 